brilliant guess. <laughs> so yeah, so uh, shall we just have a, a quiet? Father, we, we thank you for the, the food that we have just eaten and the fellowship and just ask that you would help us to, to relax together and to listen to uh, your word and, and to share and to discuss with one another uh, what we think about Jesus saying, I am the light of the world. So we, we commit this time to you in the name of Jesus. Amen. So, I am the light of the world, John's Gospel, John's Gospel. I don't know how many of you have read much of John's Gospel, you're allowed to speak back to me, <laughs> just hint, you know, um, just, you know, a hint. John's Gospel, I remember, uh, or... Oh, I don't know how long it was ago, Hillary, that we did disciple. We did several, several disciple courses, and we we covered John's Gospel on quite a few of those um, occasions. And wow, it's an amazing gospel. Different completely from Matthew, Mark, and Luke, the, what we call the Synoptic Gospels. John's Gospel. And every time you read it, you can read something and you know that there's another layer underneath it. And there's another layer. And John says something and you read it on face value. And you know full well that there's more and more underneath. It's an amazing, an amazing gospel. So of course this thing uh, is, is up there. John chapter 8, verse, uh, verse 12. Jesus spoke to the people once more and said, I am the light of the world. If you follow me, you won't have to walk in darkness because you will have the light that leads to life. John, throughout his gospel, is in absolutely no doubt who Jesus is. No doubt at all. Jesus is of God, Son of God, and he's also in this gospel leading the disciples into an experience with Jesus all the way through the gospel. Not just who Jesus is, what he does, but what he means to us and how we are to have an experience of Jesus in our lives, a relationship. Jesus, the light of the world. It's the second of the I am. The first, I don't know how many, you know, which way around you've, you've done the, the talks, but uh, I am the bread of life before this. And this is the second in, in, chapter, uh, in chapter 8. I wonder what you think um, when, you know, when you hear the word light, what, what springs to mind when you hear the word light? What do you think of? You are allowed to shout. Brightness. Brightness. Daylight. Daylight. Sunshine. Dawn. Dawn. I don't see many of them. I see the opposite. Yeah. What did you say? Happy. 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 Light means happiness. Being able to see. Being able to see. The opposite of dawn, mostly what I see. Sunset. Hope. 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 An encouraging word. I, I made a list of, of light. Uh, sunrise, sunset, warmth, presence, brightness. I've got radiance, light to lead, guide, direct, torch. We don't need torches much these days if you've got a phone with a torch. <laughs> Street light, candle. Fire garden lights, fairy lights, floodlights, security lights, sun, moon, stars, traffic lights, and one that I'm hoping I was hoping you were going to say because we're going to sing. We're going to, I've, got, I've chosen three songs, but we're going to uh, we're going to to sing.
sing about this one. I've been telling Les, this one um, has been in my head since well, the beginning of middle of June. So we went to Ireland and they sang this song in the church. And I knew I was coming here and I thought, thank you God for giving me a clue as to what to sing tonight. And I don't think anybody said it. Candlelight. Candlelight. Yeah, no, that's not the song. Something to aim for. Something to aim for, yes. That's certainly in the song. Lighthouse. Yes. Oh, okay. Yes. A lighthouse. Oh, lighthouse. <laughs> we, uh, I like lighthouses. And um, we went to Dorset a few couple of times, you know, two years ago. We went. Anybody been to Portland, Bill? It's an amazing place, isn't it? <laughs> it is. It's an amazing place. And uh, the lighthouse there, you know, red and red and white. And uh, so a lighthouse to keep um, to keep ships safe from shore. So we sang this um, in in our friend's uh, church. And uh, it's just I thought it would start us off getting this into the into the mood. It's, it's lively to 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 lighten us up. And um, apparently there are actions. Oh yeah. <laughs> I'm just looking over. That's your minister over there. Everybody she, knows the actions. She apparently knows the actions. Everybody knows Everybody the actions. Does. I don't know the actions. We didn't do much about the actions <laughs> in, the, in the church. But shall we sing it, Les? Thank you. Well, Les is my technical
we understand then? What, what do we what do we think Jesus means when he refers to himself as light of the world? What do we think he means when he says? Ponder that one. He'll come back to it any time. Yeah, you're going to say something, Brian. Uh, well, I can only say I think that he was he was trying to. St- to specify to his disciples at the time, because they were, you know, they, they didn't always get the message, that what he had to say was the truth, the way it was light. You've got to understand that. And I have got this from my father, who is God in heaven. Very, you know, it's a very bold thing, but it's what it, it means, I feel. It's very profound, isn't it, when you when you think about it. I just think it means he show you he will show you the way, he will light your way and show you the way to go. Guiding and directing. Yes. You see, in this in in this part of the of the gospel, Jesus arrives on the scene and it's after the incident of the woman caught in adultery. And then he arrives on another scene and he just arrives on a scene and announces who he is. So by saying, I am the light of the world, he's telling them something else about himself. Something else about himself. And if we look at, um, even in the first chapter of John, if we go back to John chapter 1, 1 to 9, in the beginning, you know that we, you know, it's usually Advent time when we knew. In the beginning was the Word. In my version, said the Word already existed. The Word was God. The Word, and the Word, the Word was with God. The Word was God. And a few verses on the Word gave life to everything that was created, and life brought light to everyone. Back in chapter one of John, he's setting it. He's setting the tone for this. And, you know, God sent John the Baptist to to tell about the light, that everyone might believe of his testimony. John himself was not the light. He was a witness to tell about the light, the one who is the true light, who gives light to the world. Everyone who comes in to the world. He was giving light to the world. And that's in John chapter 1 leading right up to to this to this point and of course it, it, it mentions it later on Jesus is telling everybody that he is the source of the light he isn't uh, a reflected light he isn't reflected he is the light and he can illuminate minds illuminate black minds with the knowledge of God and also the light of illumination and, and judgment. A bit like the searchlight type of light <laughs> that you want to hide from. You know, the, the floodlight, caught in the light, you know. We don't like to be in the light sometimes, do we? Especially if we've got a guilty conscience. And I feel guilty sometimes, when I'm not even guilty. We all have that capacity, don't we? Really? But the searchlight. But Jesus has come to tell us all about God, to reveal God. But again, not just to reveal God, but to elicit a response from his disciples. He wasn't just telling them about his Father, but he was leading them to response. And also, you know, he was offering a way forward a light for spiritual blindness you know people we, we talk about being a bit in the dark we don't actually mean in the dark no light we just mean a bit muddle-headed <laughs> i get like that often <laughs> getting a bit in the dark and jesus had come to reveal himself to set us free from that blindness and light, when we think of light, it's bound up in truth, 
truth versus falsehood. Jesus is saying who he is and what he's about. And there's the promise of the light of life. The light of life. What we've, we've said, you know, brightness, joy, those kinds of things in our, in our lives. The promise of the light of life. Which comes, you know, it contrasts with the alternative. The alternative to light, yeah. darkness. Not just physical darkness. Mm. Darkness of feeling, spiritual darkness. And of course, when Jesus was saying, "I am the light of the world," he was fully aware of the scriptures. And again. When we're, we're thinking about light, we look a lot to Advent, don't we? And what's that famous verse from Isaiah that we hear um, in Advent? People who have walked in darkness have seen a great light. The people who walk in darkness have seen a great light. Well, Jesus was spot on. He knew, he knew the scriptures. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. I don't know if you've ever been, if you've ever felt that you've been enveloped in darkness. When we think about, you know, I'm not going to appear because we've got the light. You know, but when we think about light and dark, have you ever been in a, in a dark place? It's, it can be quite scary, can't it? You lose your bearings. Do you lose, do you? Yeah? When I'm in the dark, I mean, the physical dark. I'm often in the other kind of dark, but not knowing what I'm doing, I mean dark, kind of dark. Um, when it's dark, pitch black, I lose my balance. I turn into a, a hundred year old when I'm walking, you know. My last appointment, I, you know, my last appointment was in Grassington. And uh, very first evening, visit that I had to do. I did a recce during the day. You know what I mean by a recce. I went to test it out to see where I was going. I thought, yeah, 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 yeah. Pulled in at the pub car park house across the road. It was to discuss a funeral. I've not been in Washington very many weeks really. Did it in the daylight. The visit was in November at seven o'clock at night. What had I not taken into consideration? No street lights. Nothing. Pulled up, the cafe was closed, pulled up at the, the, the cafe, got out of my car, what no light. <laughs> and it was in the days, not the dark ages, it was in the days when my no <coughs> torch in the car. I got out of the car and I crossed over and I felt such an idiot. There was a, a cattle grid on this drive. <laughs> exactly, I thought, you know, broken ankles, you know, <laughs> flashing through the mind. And here I am, you see, I've got pitch black. The light going in the house. I'm teetering over this cattle grid, looking around to make sure nobody was watching. Got to the house, all, all okay. Did the visit, came out, and I'm thinking, please don't watch me down the drive. <laughs> please don't be looking. But she'd opened a, 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 a curtain to let me see down the drive. And what did I see? at the bottom of the <laughs> Probably a gate. <laughs> Say that again. <laughs> Probably a gate that went past Absolutely. The <laughs> there was a gate <laughs> beside the cattle grid. And if I'd been able to see it, I would have just opened the gate and walked through. <laughs> what a twit. And I'll tell you something, there was a torch in my car from that day onwards. <laughs> We can be like that. We can be in, the, in that pitch black, and it was very scary. But, you know, Jesus knew what he was talking about. When we think
think about being in the dark, it gets a very scary. You know, and, and you need the, the, we talk about, you know, oh, the penny drop or the light dawn. What a moment, suppose. Have you had any of those moments? When you're sort of thinking, you don't know what you're doing, you don't know where you're going, and you're trying to puzzle something out, and then all of a sudden, we sometimes call them the light bulb moment, don't we? The light contrasting to, to, the, to the darkness. In, in, in biblical language, darkness isn't only the night, but also bad stuff. Bad stuff. The darkness is described as bad stuff going on. And, you know, walking in the dark isn't, isn't easy. We can't see our way in the same, you know, walking in the dark, walking in the wrong direction, away from the light. Instead of walking towards the light of life. We can find ourselves walking away, lost in a, in a fog. Darkness is described in, in different ways. And that's scary. I was brought up in, in Church of England, and uh, I remember there was a there was a lot talked about darkness. And I was in the brownies, and we had to go to, to church, and uh, we went through the the liturgy of of it all. And sometimes we we go, you know, in an evening, and in the evening prayer, that's a very scary. If you can guess the one I'm talking about, it's a very, I've just written it out so I didn't, I didn't forget. One of the prayers in the evening, in the evening prayer. Lighten our darkness, we beseech thee, O Lord, and by thy great mercies defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. It's enough to have you looking under the bed when you go to bed, isn't it? You know. But that was the language, you know, that was used. And, and the people listening to Jesus would, would get that. They would understand that. But so for him to say, I am the light of the world, was an encouraging thing to say. It was a thing to say, look, I've got the answer. I am the answer. You don't need to walk in the dark. Follow me. And you'll be walking in the light. Walking in the light. Follow me and be walking in the light. I wonder, we, we, we sung the lighthouse, I wonder just how many songs can you think of? They don't have to be church songs. How many, how many songs can you think of about, about light? Light, you know, any kind of light. How many songs can you, can you think of? Yes, now that was one that I, I debated whether to to, to choose that. Um, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. That's very encouraging, this little light of mine. But we know that the, the, the properties of light. You only need, you know, if you, this was, was, was pitch black and we lit a match, or we had a tea light. In spite of how dark it was, you only need a little light to be seen. Now that's not to say that we should think of ourselves as only a little light. Sometimes we can, we can see that and think, well, you know, what can I do? You know, a little, a little line. Yeah, that's that's a good one. Any, any others? Walk in the light. Say that again. Sorry. Walk in the light. Walk in the light. Walk in the light. That's a, a good chorus, isn't it? Love shine a light. Love shine a light on the corner of every corner of the world. Because we think about, you know, in flat Earth society, you know, the Earth's four corners. Yeah. Meet in every place. Does anybody remember Jesus bids us shine? 
Yeah, it's good. You can say, oh, we've sung that too much. Sorry, it's shallow. It is an uplifting one, isn't it? Yes, it's an encouragement yeah. to, to, to shine, isn't it? It's an encouragement to, to shine. If you think about Jesus, light um, of the world, you know, coming to give meaning, direction, and show us the way, the light of life and compassion to reveal himself you know to each one of us to tell us you know who he is but also to encourage us to be who we are were you going to say something Brian before i was going to say that i know that some people say it's getting a bit hectic that song but basically when it does get you will stop singing but really it's what it's all about <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sorry, I've got the microphone. Did you hear what Brian said then? Sometimes, you know, I said we've, we've sung that song too much and it gets a bit hackneyed. But it, it is what it is. It says what it, what it says, doesn't it? it? It's about, you know, encouraging Jesus, light of the world. But before our evening draws to a close, just to think about what it means for us, acknowledging Jesus, light of the world, and then following that, stepping out into that, and knowing that he can reach into any darkness, that, you know, we can trust him. He came to reveal what we are to be in, in, in our world, wherever we are. You know, what we are to, to take, you know, in, in, into our place in the world. And in, in Matthew's Gospel, he's mentioning... Um, Chapter 5, in amongst the Beatitudes, chapter 5, verses 14 to 16. You, Jesus is saying here, you are the light of the world. Like a city on a hilltop that cannot be hidden. No one lights a lamp and then puts it under a basket. Instead, a lamp is placed on a stand where it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your good deeds shine out for all to see, that everyone will praise your heavenly Father. You are the light of the world. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. And then he says, you are the light of the world. As long as you've got oil in your mouth. Did anybody hear that? As long as you've got oil in your lamp. <laughs> Absolutely. <clears throat> Absolutely. Have you, in the past or recently, um, you know, heard or experienced something that has illuminated your awareness of God's presence in the world? Have you, have you had any of those moments recently or? In, in, you know, where, where light has, has dawned and you thought, oh yeah, that's what it means, or somebody's done something and been a light to you and you've said, you know, thank you God for that person. I think during the pandemic, when people were doing... Sorry, I've got a microphone, you. Yeah. Is that all right? <laughs> Yes, and often, you know, people, anybody else want to? It, it's, it's, it's often as well not that the people kind of get that they're doing a good thing. They just do something and it means the world to you. It lightens your, your life. Anybody? You know, when, when there's been a lot of people in my life and you know we, we have a friend who is, who's had really 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 bad 
that time of it. And the worst of all, she, she lost her son. Um, he was only 14 months old, and I'd just gone into ministry. And you know, she had some real, real awful experiences. But she's the one who sort of like turns up at the right time and cheers me up or you know you, you don't have to say anything to her sometimes and she'll just she's the sort of person who she's not over the top in your face she'll just come can I just borrow you a minute and she'll just say thinking about you yeah. and that's it say no more and you know when when you're like that, she just does that. And it's like, I won't say it's sunrise, because I don't do sunrises, but it's, it's, it's a, a, warm, a warm presence in your life. People like that are like goals, aren't they? Like goals. I, I, I joked before about you know, being a bit dim, being a bit in the dark. But then you'll be reading something or somebody will, 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 will say something and you think, oh yeah, that's what it means. And then you can mull it over in the coming days and try and put it into, uh, into practice. What you've learned. They might, you know, be there all the time for you. They might, you know, be there. Or they might just be an, an intermittent, somebody that you bump into by accident. And they just have the right word at the right time. Or they don't even speak. They just act. Or they just, you know, do something and go off without wanting any fuss or bother. The last and final question is for you and me. Do we see ourselves as light, as long as you've got enough oil in your lamp? <laughs> but do we see ourselves as light for others. You know, you can be a, a, you know, a leader, a companion, a friend, a neighbour. How do you respond to that challenge? You are a light. Smile. Mm. Very, very good. Absolutely. Absolutely. Have you seen that poster of a couple of people and um, where the mouth is on one person there's a blank space. Have you seen that? There's a blank space and it says if you see someone without a smile give them one of yours. <laughs> it just needs to be. That's, that's all that some people need. I think sometimes, particularly uh, Particularly people who are on the tills at the supermarket. You know, we, we're in there, I've been thinking about this for a few days. <laughs> just, just, you know, like the random act of kindness thing that, that people did, you know, but being, just, just being kind, just offering a gesture. And, um, you know, you go through the tills at whichever supermarket, Morrison's, all day. There are other supermarkets <laughs> available. And, you know, somebody particularly fraught. Or there's somebody fraught in the line in front of you or behind you. You know, just, just stand there and just sort of, you know. Or we were, be, we were behind somebody the other day and two people, and the card went wrong in the machine for one person. And then there was another person and, and her things all got mixed up. And I think. On a bad day, I would have stood there harumphing, you know, <laughs> you know, if you're in a rush. But, you know, just a smile, just a smile at them, just to, to let them know actually it's okay, you know, carry on. And I think that can make um, a difference. And I know that the church here, the congregation here, you do all sorts of stuff, don't you, for other, for other people. You are the light in this in this place. What kind of light are you? Sometimes I'm a, I'm a tea light. 
half going out. <laughs> it's just about keeping lit. Sometimes, you know, a candle. I remember a candle during the war. My father was so. Can I give you a mic? Can I mic? I'm just saying, my father was serving in the war, and my mother had to work, of course, and so I was with my auntie and uncle very often at bedtime and saying with them. And they used, or my auntie used, a candle to light me upstairs and before we said our prayers. We had another bed to set our prayers. So I was thinking all the time you were talking kind of my arms are the big hand. Yeah. <laughs> and it might not seem much, might it? A candle, but in the darkness, a candle is everything. Mm -hmm. Or you might be a candelabra. You might be. <laughs> a tea light. A candelabra. When you're asking too many questions, a searchlight. Believe <laughs> that. Um, anybody want to make any comment or say anything? Have I missed anybody out that's wanted to speak? Yes. When when um, I think of a light. It's whenever I think of the Holy Spirit in me, I always think of a space in my heart that has a candle in it and a flame. And whatever happens to me on the outside, that flame maybe kind of flickers a bit, but it's always there. And when I need to, I can focus on that light. And that gets me through all the times I've been in, in hospital or whatever. And so, that, that to me is a very precious light, but it's a light that I can share, and it, but it will always stay as strong as it is. And that's what it says in scripture, isn't it? That's what it says, you know, the, <coughs> the light has come into the world and the darkness hasn't got it out. Can you say that we have a wonderful group of techies in our we're well with it. Oh yes, there's a wonderful techie operator in these managing well, me well, tonight, tonight, yes. Well, there's always an exception with tonight, but I mean, it's <laughs> we do have those who can do the park on every week and well other things as you know. But what I'm getting around to saying is one of them has a signature thing about his presentations. And when it's when it's literally the person's turn, what Virtually whatever we're singing on, whatever is on the screen, somewhere there is a tea light burning. Right, right. And I, I think, well, that's what the fun. Especially, uh, <coughs> just adding stuff, especially during lockdown, when you went through stages when it first happened and, uh, and we had glorious weather and everybody's thinking, ah, this is ace. You know, now I've been to get track to the church, you can sit there in your slippers and all that stuff. <laughs> but, but then when, when we went through the patch of where we were like, you know, sick and tired of this, and it came to the Sunday morning service and you saw that little tea light, however small yes. it was, you know, it, 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 was, it was just a symbol yeah. of, well, I'll go back to what I said earlier, a symbol of hope. Yeah, they were and, uh, it was lovely. Yeah, yeah. We're going to sing our, our final song, our usual to close. Just have uh, a quiet moment. thoughts and ideas that are in our heads and our hearts. That you'll go with us as we go from this place in your name. Amen. Amen. So we'll have, I don't know how familiar this 
uh, last one will be here, which is in Singing the Fair of Christ. Oh, yes, we are familiar with it. It's in sign of the temple that we're all playing. Christ be our light, longing for light.
these meetings and we managed to get together <coughs> since February, when, whenever it was, we started February, I think. But we need to get back to think about this in terms of when we want to meet again, like before all, maybe differently. And certainly, we're still searching for a suitable theme for the next series. So if you've thoughts on either of those, please do tell me or Esther or Hillary so we can do something about it. Once again, thank you to all those people who have helped regarding the food and preparing it and washing up and so on. So it's wonderful and thank you all very much. I just want to say again thank you to Janet and to wish you all good night. God bless and a very safe journey home. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.